Okay, hi. Um, so uh, I wanted to uh, make a quick little video here talking about uh, this week's materials. Although uh, before I do, um, I thought uh, before I move on from assignment eight, I just got these returned back to everybody who submitted something. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the solution for the the last two tasks, uh, the, the last task in particular, uh, because um, a, a lot of people got the first three tasks, which is great. Um, and um, um, uh, many people got the fourth task, the delete index, uh, but didn't quite get to the delete value, right? So, so uh, the most common thing was to either get the first three um, or the first three and then the fourth one, uh, but not to get the, the fifth one. I mean, I had a few people get all of them. Uh, but um, but uh, not everybody. So uh, I mean, you know, th th this is good code to uh, understand uh, in order to you know work with uh, a linked list. Uh, so I thought I would go kind of through the um, uh, example solution for this. Um, maybe I'll post a, a URL to this uh, example solution that I have here. Um, so let's jump right to. I won't, I only, only, only want to spend maybe five or ten minutes on this, but um, let's jump right to the uh, task. Um, um, uh, the, the deleting the value at index for the task four here. Um, Let's see, I get the tests here up. So um, for task four, um, we basically had to, you know, so, so if we have a, a list of values like this and we say delete the value at index, we had to kind of treat this as if it was an array. Um, so if we wanted to, we could we could overload the operator for this. In fact, um, um, we we we'd probably do this. We do this later on, where we we use the delete index um, to be the method for the overloaded, um, you know, indexing operator for our list base class, right? So um, I can't remember if we had defined that on this one or not. Let's let's look at the header file here for. The list HPP. So, um, so, so what I'm talking about, you know, so we we overloaded the operator, uh, the the insert um, and the extract stream operators to be insert back and insert front, right? So, um, I could have defined that we overloaded the operator uh, square braces. Uh, that one, because basically that's what the delete index is doing. We're treating the list as if it's an array, um, and we're removing. Um, uh, well, um, uh, I guess I shouldn't say that because we're we're doing a specific thing. We're removing an I the item at that particular index instead of modifying it or returning it. So, um, so yeah, I guess we really wouldn't want to overload the indexing operator for this. But um, anyway, let, let's look at. Um, the implementation for delete index, just real quickly. Most most people that tried this got it, you know. Um, so let's find the delete index here. So. Um, if you followed, you know, you should have had the special cases. Um, and so in this example solution here, you know, we, we start off by checking the index like you were supposed to do um, and throw an exception if you tried to access a index, tried to remove a value that index that's bigger than the size of the list or a negative index, right? Um, and then likewise, um, I, I like to actually just immediately return because what this does is this keeps me from having to use an if else uh, and like an else. So uh, if, if you don't use the return here, you have to use an if, else if, and then an else around all this. But that ends up making all of this code for the, the last kind of more general case be indented. Okay. And in general, you know, indenting code makes it more complex. So um, um, when, when you remove indentation levels, 
Um, it actually helps readability. Um, uh, a lot of people think that, and I, I tend to follow that, you know. So, so anyway, we kind of have two special cases. You know, if, if the value is the, the index zero, that means we want to delete the front item. So you could just reuse, you should have reused the delete front if you were following instruction for the assignment. Likewise, if the value is, is if the index is the last value, so that the size minus one is going to be the, the last valid index here. Um, we can just delete that in. So the general case then is that we want to, you need to basically search um, and get a pointer to the node that you want to remove, all right? So a lot of people use a for loop, which is fine, uh, but, but the general idea um, is I like to use a while loop, right? Um, although, um, yeah, I mean, in this case, a for loop would have been just would, would have been the same here. Um, the reason why, so, so I'll kind of show you what I did here, a little bit cleaner solution than most people were doing. So we know that, that the value can't be um, at the front index because we already checked that, okay? So, so the value that we want to remove has to be at index one or greater, right? So um, I start off with with the prev, with a prev temporary pointer being equal to the front, because I want to keep track of just the, the previous, because uh, I want to have the node, I probably should have gotten out uh, a whiteboard here so we could draw this. So it makes it uh, easier if you actually draw these things out. Uh, maybe I'll do that on Thursday. Well, um, so, but if we have a, a handle to the node before the one that we want to remove, uh, then, then it makes it relatively easy. And that's what we did in this solution here. So we just start with prev, and, and prev is meant to indicate this is, this is the node previous to the one that we want to actually remove. And then we start off with prev at front, right? Um, and then we just iterate until prev is, is um, um, you know, so if we iterate a fixed number of times, prev should end up being pointing to the node before the one that we want to remove here, right? So, um, um, as long as current index is less than index, we just set prev to be the prev to the next one. So, so at the end of this, prev points to the node before the one at the index we want to remove, okay? So what we want to do, uh, so, so the, the node that we want to actually delete is the, the, the next node from previous, okay? So previous next node is the one that we want to delete. So I start off by remembering that node, and then we're going to cut that out of the, the linked list, okay? So we set prev's next to be equal to the node to delete next, okay? So what that does is that modifies so that next isn't pointing to the node to the delete, it's pointing to the node after the node that we want to delete now. So we've effectively removed um, this node from the linked list, right? And now prev's next is pointing to the node after that. And now we can safely delete that node. And we, we had a second temporary variable, variable in my example solution here because we want to remember this after we uh, remove it from the linked list so we can actually delete it. So we can actually, you know, be good mem good me manager of memory um, and call delete on that node so that we return that node back to the heap, right? So all we do is, is call delete on that node um, and then set our size to one since so we've, we've reduced the size of our list by one now at this point, right? So um, that's, that's kind of the cleanest thing. So, so for both this and also for the delete value, uh, I use the same idea is that if you have the node before the one you want to remove, then that's all you really need. Another way to do this is you can keep track of both the, the previous um, and the current node, right? But that's, that's a little bit unnecessary because if, if you have the previous, you can tell what the next node is to the previous by just following the pointer. Right. Um, so then let me discuss deleting values. This was definitely, you know, more complicated, right? Because for one thing, um, I made it that you had to delete all the values. So, so the, the most general case is you really had to, to make certain you exhaustively search through the list, right? And find all instances of this value and removed it from the list. Right. So it wasn't enough just to find the first 
indicated value in removing. If, if there was multiple repeats of that value, you had to remove all of them from the list to be completely correct here. So I'll kind of skip over. Um, um, to do this completely correctly, you really needed to have a loop, like for example, where you look through all, uh, as long as the value at the front um, is the value you want to remove that you were deleting it by calling delete front, right? Um, and you also had to be you have to check here because it is possible that you're doing it. So if your list was just all, so if I had a list of five values, but they were all equal to the value that we want to remove, we would end up removing values from the front using this loop until the, the loop was empty. So at some point when you remove the last value, um, it is possible that calling delete front the list would be empty at that point. Um, and then front would be null, right? So this loop keeps happening as long as the front value is equal to the value you want to remove or front is not null. So as long as the, the list is not empty at that point, right? So this is one indication the list is empty. Um, and I could have done the same thing to remove the values from the back, but um, that ends up being not necessary for the solution that I give here, right? But, but the code, to remove from the back would, would work the same way. Um, although I probably should also be checking if back is uh, not null as well, because it is possible that when I'm deleting from the back, um, the, the, the list would become empty again at that point. Um, although really, it, it, I guess maybe I had it, didn't have it in there uh, in this case, because it shouldn't be possible, because if you get past this part here, um, If the list is empty, um, then um, then back is going to be null, right? So if the list did end up being empty, yeah. So so you probably do still need. I probably do still need to be checking uh, if the list is empty because uh, it is possible that back is null after doing this. So if I had left this loop in here, I really need to have a check for back's not equal to the null pointer. Uh, all right, I just realized in my solution, um, we, we really should prefer a new C++ code to be using AND and OR instead of the old um, double ampersands or dump, double um, um, brackets, double bars, right? Uh, because that's usually considered more readable. So. Um, all right. And then finally, the, the, the most general case, um, at this point, if we, if we get here and the list is not empty at this point, it is possible that we have some values um, in the middle of the list that are equal to the value that we want to, want to delete, okay? And then here, if you look at, 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 at my example solution here, I'm using the same solution that I, I used before. So I'm gonna keep going over here until, so I saw our start pre at front. So I know that the list isn't empty, and I know that the front value can't be uh, a node that needs to be removed because I already checked all the front values and removed them. Um, if they're equal to the value, it needs to be removed. Here, right? So I set prev to be front because prev is going to be, again, previous to the, to the node that we're checking that we want to remove or not. Right? So as long as the next value from the prev is not null pointer, so, so if it is null pointer, that means we're at the back of the list. Um, Right. So what I do is I just set a temporary variable to be current to be what is next from the prev. So now prev um, is, is a node and then current is the node that prev is pointing to. And we're checking whether we want to delete current or not, right? So if, if current's value is equal to value, we do the same thing I did previous, I, I did in the other function. I set prev's next to be current next effectively cutting current out of the list. Um, and then I delete current here and I set si and I reduce size by one, right? Uh, with the caveat that, that there's a special case here. So by, by removing this loop here, I do have to check um, that um, if I just removed the back node, back becomes previous now, right? So it is possible that current 
is equal to my back node. Um, and if I just deleted it, I, I need to, to set back to be previous to keep my node values uh, correctly up to date here, front and, front and back, right? All right, so that's, that's to me about the simplest I could come up with to implement uh, this more general case. So, so now after I've done this, prev is still pointing to the previous value. So, so after, after, after we removed current from the, from the list and deleted current, prev, prev still points to uh, the node that we want to continue searching from. Um, and prev's next node, note, though, has been updated to be the node after the one we just deleted. Um, right? Uh, but so, so notice I don't advance the list. So, so previous still pointing to the to the same previous node, but its next node has been updated. So, so again, when when we go through the loop here, so the else part won't happen um, if we were removing a value. So again, when we go through the loop here, the the, the previous still pointing to the same previous, but but if, if we removed a node, next has been removed, but but the next um, pointer is pointing to a different value. Right, so 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 uh, current will be a different one, uh, and and then again we will check if that value needs to be removed or not. All right. Otherwise, so so if it wasn't the value we were searching for, we need to just update prev to go to the next value and, and keep iterating until we get to the end of the list. All right. And I had some extra code in there that to make certain that we had actually found a value and throw the exception that we asked for if we didn't find a value. Um, all right, so so that um, uh, maybe, maybe I'll post a link to this example solution here for people to look at that, especially, you know, uh, maybe, you know, think about your delete value or how you might have implemented delete value if you didn't quite get to it, um, because it's, it's good to understand this um, and be able to do things like this, right? So delete all values of a particular value from a, a node, from a linked list that might have duplicates of the value is what we're doing here. That's a, a common um, standard kind of task that you're given to do uh, to update a linked list here. Um, all right, and then let me um, go ahead and maybe also talk about the next assignment, get started with it here. I'll talk more about it on Thursday. Um, so for assignment nine, uh, I need to do all the usual stuff, um, except the assignment and clone it and things. Assignment nine, nine we're going to be working with uh, stacks. So assignment nine is all about stacks here. Um, so once you accept the assignment, um, let's do the, uh, the, the normal, let me uh, copy that URL. Um, let's go through the checklist here. So we accepted the assignment, uh, copy the assignment, let's clone the repository. I'm gonna close this off. on our assignment nine repository that I just created into my sync assignment sub, sub directory. And we'll open it up. Um, And then uh, let's configure the project by running uh, configure. So we need to open up a terminal. Should get rid of any warning about IntelliSense and stuff. Um, and um, we can check that our, for example, code formatting is working.
So um, if your code format is working, when we just save, it should, for example, re-indent braces, uh, put white space around binary operators, and so on. Uh, and then I'll spec certain everything builds and runs. So I'll do a clean first, control shift one, control shift two to do a, to build everything. So like the previous assignment, we've got, um, we've got a hierarchy of stack classes. So we've got a base class. Um, so, so, you know, hopefully everybody did the previous assignment and understood the object oriented, um, setup that we had there. So we've got the same kind of setup. We've got an abstract base class called stack, and we've got concrete implementations using an array and a linked list here, right? So there are a lot of files to be compiled, um, but it should compile. And then when you run, um, it is actually running a few test cases in, uh, I think the test uh, a stack. Um, but they should all be passing for you initially, all right? So that's the standard kind of stuff you should do. Uh, I'll go ahead and create issue one here then as well. Create your issues. And we'll check that our pull request is up there. and get started on our first issue here. So, um, okay, so our first um, task is uh, we need to implement uh, the push and the pop uh, member functions for our stack here. Um, uh, and we're gonna be implementing uh, these for the, the, the linkless version of our stack, all right? Um, so this will have some similarity to implementing the insert front and back that we just did in the previous assignment here. Uh, although in this assignment, um, uh, we're also going to have to implement a few things in the A list. Um, so the array based list. Um, uh, later on here. So I believe. Anyway, so we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, all right, so um, in fact, like uh, pushing an uh, item onto a stack, we're gonna be putting our items on the back of our uh, list, linked list of items for our linked list implementation here. So pushing uh, onto a stack is, is basically the same as the insert, uh, um, uh, oh, I have that backwards. So we're going to be using the front of the list to be the, the top of our stack. So um, so it's doing the same as the insert front function from our previous assignment, right? So, um, so as you did on the previous assignment, um, Um, I'm going to also um, uh, get you started on this. Um, so I believe it's in the assignment description there. So, uh, you know, we all, there should also be um, a push and a pop um, in the base class. So we can start by um, uncommon those. I'll just uncomment push to start with, right? Um, but um, so, so we need to define our push um, member method for our linked list class. So that's the, uh, the, we're implementing push and pop on the linked list class here. Right? And we're going to be basically doing that by inserting new nodes that we push under the stack to the front of our linked list. Okay. So, so if you look at the um, lstack.hpp, um, let's put this after clear, like, like we had in there.
Um, if you look at um, um, our L stack, the concrete implementation of the link list, um, you'll notice that there's actually only a single private member variable called top node. Okay, so this is going to act as the front of a link list. Um, in this case, since we're always pushing and popping on the top, we don't have to we don't have to keep track of the back. Of the of the linked lists in this case, so we're never going to be adding and removing items um, or accessing the value at the back of the list. Uh, we only need them at the at the front or, the, or what we're going to call the top, since we're thinking of this as a stack now. Right. Um, so the push works kind of the same way. Um, And in fact, if I um, um, want to get kind of a, a quick start here, I might want you might want to take a look at the uh, the, the A stack uh, implementation um, uh, for the push function um, because it'll have the, the same similar code for checking if the um, well. Um, so let's take take a look at it. So if we look at A stack uh, and find the uh, push implementation for the A stack. Um, actually, I guess, yeah, it won't really help you too much to, to copy and paste this because you're not going to be able to use, you, you won't need the grow stack if needed. Um, and of course, this is using an array to put the item. Uh, into the, uh, you know, keep track of it on the stack here. So, um, but uh, anyway, let's put this after our clear method. This method will uh, create a new node and link the new node to the top of the uh, links list of nodes. All right. So in this case, we're implementing the push for the L stack, um, and um, yeah, we might need um, nothing else in this case, right? Um, and this is a void function, so um, this should compile and run. So if I go back then and um, let's look at the test L stack. So um, you'll want to be uncommenting the test cases for the, the test L stack. Um, I'm, I, I guess that I'm also going to have to to define the pop method as well in order to get this to compile because uh, in our first test case, we've got both uh, tests of push and pop. Um, so like here, I mean, our most basic is if we, if we push an item on an empty stack, we should end up with that item on the top of our stack here. Right? Um, so to get this to compile with the stub function, uh, let me go ahead and add the, um, the, the pop stub function here as well. So pop is going to be like removing an item, uh, so, so deleting the item uh, from the front. Okay, so you didn't have to implement that on the previous assignment, but but basically we're going to be doing the same thing like the delete front that you had been given uh, before in order to do the pop, right? Um, but this is a, a void function as well. Uh, because um, uh, in, in our, as we talked about in our stuff uh, for the class this week, the uh, pop doesn't actually return a value. You have to use the, the front um, method to get the item at the front of the stack. So that should be defined um, uh, as part of the interface, the generic interface for our stack here. 
or the top. So, so we called it top here, right? So, so um, top will get the, the top item on the stack and return it. If you do a pop though, that's, that's just removing the item, but it doesn't actually uh, return the value for you at the top of your stack. Um, so again, I think I'll, I'll save a little bit of time by, by copying and pasting the pop from our array-based implementation of stack here. So this is our array-based pop. Um, and putting that as a stub function so we can get things to compile at this point. So. Uh, oh, in this case, though, yeah, you, you might want to keep the um, uh, copy quite everything there. So, um, you might want to keep this because you, you probably would probably do have to do the same thing check if the, the um, current uh, stack is empty um, and throw an exception here, right? So, here for our pop. The um, the um, uh, top is um, um, uh, basically about the same here. So um, so so um, you know we just have to make certain. So so now we're going to be doing this in our, our uh, linked list implementation of a stack here um, and. Uh, you should always check all your things when you do a copy and paste that they are uh, correct here. Um, and I can probably keep even keep that, um, um, although we're going to do some extra work here. But but the size should reduce by one when we when we do a pop here, right? Um, all right, so that should be enough to um, um, compile. Hopefully, uh, after we uncomment test one here. So let's let's do a clean build. And just make sure it compiles and runs. But I'm expecting for my first push here, um, uh, here that it should be failing that, you know, but because um, we're not updating the size um, and things. So. so, yeah, so that's building. And when we run our tests, um, let's see what the first failing test is here, actually. So, for the code that I just gave you, the first failing test is going to be happening on line 56. Um, which is yeah what I what I told you here. So I'm commenting that the, the first family one will be not getting the size here. Okay. Um, all right. Um, and then so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop here. Uh, although I haven't completed off, for example, the uh, stub of the, um, the the push function here yet. Right. So, uh, but but the push function, like I said, is going to be pretty similar to the insert front. So I'll leave that, and I'll probably do this maybe on Thursday if people are still stuck on it. But I'll leave that for people to get started. So basically, you have to create a new node, and then you have to make that new node the new um, um, top node um, of, of our linked list of values, right? Um, and you have to update the size by adding one to it, and so on. All right. OK, um, and uh, yeah, that's it for this video. So I'll go into to the assignment nine some more of uh, the, the other tasks on Thursday. Uh, but if you have questions, uh, send them to me. I'm going to see you guys later.